Hello world, my name is Akish Mullins and this is the Yaku Report. And today's show is brought to you by today's show is brought to you by Lost Stars Clothing. Today, as you see, I am wearing the blood and loyalty shirt because basically from the title you already know it's somewhere centered around that whole concept of blood and loyalty. Some things that people love to throw around but really like to live up to. Not for themselves, they expect for you to live up to these high expectations, but the expectations that they that they would like for you to live up to, they fail to live up to themselves. This is what brings me to this gentleman right here. Like I said, this show is about bad parenting. This father right here, I don't even know if I want to say day, week, year, month, decade century but i do know that he's a bad parent and he's a bad example of what a good father but what i would say about this gentleman is that he is a great example of what a bad father looks like there are a lot of men out there right now who would have loved to been in this gentleman's position to have custody and possession of their children to raise their child to be in their child's life to be a positive male role model in that child's life to show them what a positive male role model looks like you had the opportunity to do that even if you did wrong in your life you still had the opportunity this one chance through your son to make that correction in that wrong that you made throughout your life. I'm not going to go into detail just yet into my thoughts on the entire situation, explain to you exactly what it is that he did and why I feel that this gentleman should receive the same punishment that he decided to put upon his own child. And for what? watching a television show as you can see from my not the running banner the running banner you see you can follow my social media you can follow me on instagram and twitter at Aklord, facebook akish Aklord mullins remember to like share comment subscribe the question is do you know of a television show that will cause you to beat your son to you know for me, there isn't one. I can't think of one. I thought I had an idea, a clue of one, but as I said, well, I forgot to put five years old, but I meant five years old. All right. See, I fixed it. I fixed it. So as you can see from the question that I have right here on the screen, which is, do you know of a television show that will cause you to beat your five-year-old son to, you know, I'm... Um, you know what it is. Uh, you're old enough to, to, to read, to understand, comprehension, Jeopardy. I mean, well, not Jeopardy. Will of Fortune. Will of Fortune. That's what it was. Will of Fortune. No, let me stop playing. Seriously. The man right here, his name is Gerald Oglesby. He's 33 years old. His son was five years old. His name was General Oglesby. And he was found unresponsive at approximately 1.30 a.m. on March the 16th. Happened last month, but I'm just getting around to talking about it. Things happen, but the story is still important. And what this man did is still horrible. This discussion still needs to be had. And we are going to have it right after we hear from the news what this gentleman had did. Another reason why it took me a minute to do the story is because I was trying to see if there was any more information that came out. And I guess he gave all the information that they needed. There was no other information that came out. So you will hear what the news people had to say. We'll, then we'll come back and discuss what the news people did not discuss inside the newscast. Also discuss also what the newscast discussed in the newscast. And we're going to get this whole show on the road. Now, we're going to discuss what's in the newscast, what's not in the newscast, and then we'll bring this whole thing to a close. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go. Ahead today, a father accused of beating and killing his five-year-old son will be in court. Now, this morning, court documents indicate the father did not call 911 immediately after the child stopped breathing. Henderson police say it is the first. I'm trying to understand. 
I know I beat my child. I know I beat my child badly. If I'm angry and I beat my child badly in anger, which leads to them, which causes them to have bodily harm done to them to the point where they're no longer breathing and they need medical attention. If I love my child, I believe that I would go and seek that medical attention for my child. But what I see, or should I say what I hear, as these women have just stated, is that instead of this boy going and get help for this child, this boy was more concerned with his own life, more concerned with if he's going to be arrested. And once he's arrested, how much time he's going to get, if he's ever going to come home, what's going to happen to him in jail. All of that, all of those thoughts, all of those things should have happened before you in a fit of rage, in anger, raised your fist at your son because he was watching a program that you didn't approve of. Children watch programs that we don't approve of all the time. No matter what age they are, what you do is you go. Okay, let's just say this scenario. You walk in on your five-year-old son, which in my mind, five years old, I believe that's around kindergarten. So yes, they're old enough to know better. And at that age, they are really old enough to understand when you say, do not watch this program. You explain it to them. But instead of doing that, Going in, changing the show, changing the channel, explaining to them why they should not watch this program, why this program isn't good for them, why you don't want them watching it. No, you go and do what someone, I guess, used to do to you. And I guess they did it to you so much that you were so broken that you went to the extreme overboard. But we're going to get homicide in the city this year. A reporter, Elizabeth in court, is live outside the Henderson Justice Court to explain what police say happened just moments before this tragedy. Alyssa. Well, Kelsey, that arrest report details what happened in the moments before this young boy was killed. I do want to warn you, though, some of those details too graphic to share this morning. That being right after they get finished going through what it is they're going to go through, we're going to go through those details that they say are too graphic to go through. And I'm not going to be graphic about it because there is nothing to be graphic about. It's just stating exactly what it is he did to them, not giving you detail, but it's stating exactly what it is this boy did to this innocent, defenseless young child. And he does not have the right to be called a father or a daddy because he was neither one. I feel bad that this young man had to be born to someone like this gentleman. Said we do know that 33-year-old Gerald Oglesby had a history of beating his son before he was killed. Now, my problem with that part is, how is it that the police know that this man has a history of beating his son? Because if the police knows that this man has a history of beating his son, that means that Dyfus knows that this man has a history of beating this son, which now I'm trying to understand how is it that this man had custody rights or been allowed anywhere near this child knowing his history of violence towards this child and some other things, but we will get there. Henderson police say Oglesby admitted to whipping his son multiple times with a cable. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, I told you that this was a five-year-old boy, yet this man took it upon himself to whip a five-year-old with a cable box cord. Now, the cable box has a couple of cords. You have the HDMI cord. You have the power cord. And you got the HDMI, you have the power cord. It just says that the cable box cord. You took it upon yourself to beat a five-year-old with a cable box cord. A five-year-old. Okay. Box cord. He also told investigators he was forced to discipline his son for back talking back in December. Okay, you're this child's father. I can see the mother having to do or discipline a child like this for back talking or something like that. I can see it, especially little boys. They don't take their mother seriously. They, they think it's a joke, think it's a game. 
I get it. But a father, I've not heard a father who even would use words saying that they were forced to discipline a five-year-old for talking back to them. I've never heard that before. No one, a child rather, cannot force you to do anything. You did it because you wanted to. Next thing is, the reason why that child's mouth is the way his mouth was, and why he talked the way he talked, he acted out the way he acted out, and he did the things that he did, well, brother, I'm going to need you to walk in the bathroom, turn around, look up, and look at yourself in the mirror. Because his mouth was the way that his mouth was, because he watched your mouth be that way. He didn't know how to listen and like the back talk, because he watched you and his mother go back and forth in front of him that way. You said you were forced to discipline your son with a Abu box cord because he talked back to you. You put your hands on him because he talks back to you. You beat him with a cable cord because he watches a show that you doesn't approve of. At five years old, instead of being a parent and turning off the TV, putting a code on the TV so you can't watch certain programs because all cable boxes are equipped with child-proof protection. But I don't think your brain could think that far to understand that all you had to do was put a code on your cable box where he could not watch something that he should not be watching. But that wasn't the real problem. The real problem is you're the problem. You also whipped your son the Tuesday before this happened for watching an inappropriate TV show. How many times do this pattern of TV shows and whippings and this corporal punishment that you have, like this is, this is some stuff that, let's be honest here, this is things that we would hear, read about, be angry about if it was on the plantation. Fast forward to last week, police say he whipped his son for watching a TV show he felt was inappropriate and that resulted in the boy's chin to split open and bleed. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to need for somebody out there to please explain to me what television programming, no matter the rating, X-rated and beyond, what programming or show would, as he put it, force you to beat your son where now you're splitting his chin open and beating him to the point of no return? What programming is there? I would like to know. Please somebody explain to me what program is there because I can't think of one. Even X-rated and beyond, I can't think of one that would cause me to do this to my son or to any of my children. I don't, I don't get it. He then whipped the boy again just a few hours later, hitting him in the stomach and causing him to vomit. So let me get this straight. Beat this boy with a cable box. You then say... You know, I guess you want to use that he forced you to do this. A child forced you to do this because you don't have patience enough to fix your own immature ass, to grow up yourself, to be a man and not continue to act like a child, that you didn't have the patience, the foresight, wherewithal, the understanding, the compassion, the empathy towards a child. That in that moment where they was watching a program that you felt was inappropriate, that was the moment for you to say, aha, this is a teachable moment. And from that moment on, depending on what the programming was that you thought was inappropriate for your child to watch, from that moment on, you should have kept a close eye on your child to make sure that they don't watch that again or they don't display any kind of tendencies or actions because of viewing a program that you felt they were too young to view at that age. No, you didn't do any of that. You didn't think of any of that. Your thought was corporal punishment. Your thought was, let's call it what it is, child abuse to the extreme. And I'm not done, I forgot, it's right there. You also punched a five-year-old in his stomach, apparently like a grown man, to the point where he vomited and he somehow split his chin open? Like, what were you doing, treating his abdomen like a punching bag? 
You say he waited 13 minutes to call 911 and tried CPR without success. So, and I'm not going to forget that in between the, the beating with the cord and you treating him like a punching bag and splitting his chin open, there was time and you took a break to go sit down. You took a smoke break to go sit down before coming back and what doing your, your your child like this then after doing that after seeing that he needed medical attention clearly needed medical attention you waited 13 minutes to call 911 you were unsuccessful at CPR see the news this newscast said that you were unsuccessful at CPR but in a minute we're going to call it what it really was you're a shitty parent who should have never been a parent and everybody like you all need to be lined up and use your imagination. None of you need to have children when you're like this. Why? Again, we're, we're almost done with this. And we're going to get in, into the other stuff that they did not say. That's going to show you how shitty of a parent that this little boy is. Yes, by the time first responders got there to help, well, the young boy was already dead. We spoke with one neighbor who asked, we didn't show his face or name on TV out of fear for his safety, but he shared with us he was disgusted to hear a father could do that to his own son. I was disgusted to hear that a father could do that to his own son. I'm disgusted to hear that a, any parent can do that to a child. This is ridiculous. Uh, the coroner and the cops across the street. How can people do that? Why would you want to take them out? Now, police say Oglesby texted his sister saying his son died because he beat him too hard. Now, Oglesby behind bars this morning facing an open murder charge. He's expected to appear in court at 9 a.m. As I've stated, ladies and gentlemen, this gentleman right here is a shitty parent, a bad parent, a bad father. And now it's time for me to get into the things that the newscast didn't tell you or didn't talk about. He admitted to beating his son and whipping him with an electrical cord. They just said a cable cord is electrical cord, which means it's the power cord to the box, which means he unplugged the cable box. That means, well, actually, you ran up in the room in a fit of rage, yelling at your son, scaring your son. I can basically see him uh, falling up and curling in fear. You ripping the cable cord out of the wall and out of the cable box and you in a fit of rage beating the hell out of that. You then dealt him a fatal blow to his stomach. The sad part is, is like the first time you whooped the boy for, you know, watching a programming because the first time you whooped the, the uh, well, the first time you terrorized your boy, this young man, General, we're going to call him what he is. His name is General, and you're a little boy. So the first time that you put your hands on General, you split his chin open, and it was bleeding. You didn't think at that time, yes, you abused him. You did a number on him. You hurt him. You split his chin open. You didn't think in that moment that looking at your son, your son. You know, somebody that you were supposed to help to create. You didn't see in that moment your son with his chin split open, crying. Nothing didn't click in your head to have empathy and sympathy for your own child. To say, this is enough. Let me stop. I went too far. Nothing. Next thing you do that was really messed up is you gave him a shower before you beat him with an electrical cord. Which now I'm thinking, hoping, and praying you did not beat a five-year-old boy with an electrical cord right after he got out the shower before drying himself off. Again, you're a father, supposedly, was supposed to be, wanted to be, pretending to be, not really pretending to be something that you're not and to make matters worse which is the reason why i said that and to make matters worse the reason why i say not the reason why i say that like i said we're gonna call it what it is you're a shitty parent why i say that you tortured your son he was only here for five years and allegedly for five years you've tortured your son because in his fifth year you got angry at him 
because he was watching a television program that you didn't approve of. And then you punished him. You put him in a shower. No, first you whipped him and you caused his chin to split open. Then you put him in a shower. You beat him with an electrical cord. That still didn't trigger in your mind that this is enough. He's had enough. I've gone too far. No. Because in your sick demonic head, there was more you can do to this little boy. In your sick perverted head, General needed to be punished more than what it was. But he didn't. He needed you to be his father. He needed you to grow up and to teach him how to be a man. Something that clearly you missed growing up yourself. Because whether or not your father was in your life of not life or not, there were a lot of men whose fathers weren't in their lives. And when they grew up and had children of their own, they knew what it was like to not have their father there. And they made it their mission to be a part of their child's life, whether or not they're with the mother. You, sir, was given a blessing of having custody of your child. And still, you could not get the job right. Because adding to the torture that you was already given to your son, you told the police, allegedly, you told the police that you gave General a shower before continuing to beat him with an electrical cord. Then with a slipper over your hand, you punched him in his abdomen. I would like to know what kind of slipper did you have in your hand? Like, how was it in your, like, how was it in your hand? What kind of slipper was it? Slipper, boxing glove, two different things. Even a boxing glove for a five-year-old would be too much of force coming from a grown man. It still would have caused him some kind of problem. But punching him in the abdomen with a slip on your hand, you might as well punch him with nothing because that's what you basically did. Because again, like I said, General deserved a better father than you. He deserved better than you. Seriously, he deserved better than you. And the sad part about all this is when you split his chin open, nah. That ain't enough. Go get in the tub. Let me beat you with this uh, uh, electrical cord. Then, even then, it didn't click for you that that was enough. No, let me go put my hand in the slipper and punch in your abdomen. But it's not the point that you punched him in the abdomen that you knew that that was enough. You realize it was enough that you flucked up, that this was it. It's over now. This is the point of no return. Because you realize that you hit your son with so much force in his abdomen that it caused him to vomit. You hit your son with so much force in his abdomen. You beat your son, tortured your son so badly that he had a hard time walking to the point where he just laid down on the couch and vomited. And as a parent, if you were a parent, if you were a real parent, if you were a compassionate human being, you would have went and got that child some help. But even in that moment, even through all your ignorance, you didn't realize you was watching your child in his last moments. I can even tell just by the words that you told allegedly to the police to your sister and to the mother of your child, allegedly. I can tell just by reading this sentence, the boy who was having trouble walking at that point then laid down on the couch and vomited. Eventually, his breathing stopped. The reason why your son was having a hard time walking at that point is because you had tortured your son to his breaking point, a five-year-old. You beat, tortured a five-year-old worse than someone would do an animal. And people would have a problem with you doing that to an animal. But this is a baby. People get up in arms when a police officer kills a, or let's call it what it is. People have a problem when a police officer kills a black. People have a problem when men are violent towards female or women or whatever people classify themselves as but there is something about a child your child the one that you signed on to yourself when you decide to have your child when i said 
that the news said that he unsuccessfully tried CPR. And I said, well, I'll just, we'll discuss that later. It's because as I'm about to read right here, it says, Gerald allegedly performed chest compressions, but did not call 911 right away. Once on the phone with 911, he said General had not taken a breath in 13 minutes. Okay, we're going to continue. Gerald did not call the paramedics or anyone else to see if he could get some help. But what he did do, he began to rub his son's body to comfort him. Your son is slipping away by the second. And he would still be here today if you did that one thing called CPR. I understand that you said that you didn't want to lose custody of your son. But did you not like, care, have any love for, or anything? Like, did you have that much disdain for his mother that before you would see yourself have to pay for just abusing him, getting him help to make sure he survived, and then he's with his mother, that you had that much disdain that you would have to see your baby's mother with your son, that instead of seeing them together, you would rather sit by your son, watching him slip away by the second, hearing him slip away by the seconds, as you rub on his back to soothe him, instead of calling 911, performing CPR, getting this baby some help, because allegedly you told the police you didn't want to lose custody of your son. And so you chose not to get him help. You took your son out of here because you're a shitty parent. You're a shitty person. And you didn't deserve to have children. You don't deserve to be out here free with everybody else. You don't. If things, well, if we lived in a perfect world, if things were the way to think people say that they were supposed to be. We all believe in a higher power. We all know there's a higher power. But if things were to work the way that we th think that they were, are supposed to work, things like this would not have. Not at this point. This man needs to trade places with his son. He does not need to be here. He does not. And to make matters worse, as I've stated, ladies and gentlemen, before I get to that thing, I'm going to explain to you the reason why I say that he should not have been had custody of his son none, at all. And I would like to know what was Child Protective Services doing to protect this child? Because this right here, there's something wrong with this. So it says he used a cell phone charge to hit him multiple times on the arms, the back, the abdomen, and including the jawline, I guess. That's how he first got the, uh, the split on his chin. Then, now previously, this little boy right here previously was arrested and charged with multiple counts of domestic battery and one count of domestic battery by strangulation. He allegedly choked his girlfriend while her children were in the living room of their apartment, according to an arrest report. A neighbor who lives downstairs from general claims to have heard repeated thumping noises for two hours on the evening of march the 15th so for two hours this ignorant person tortured this baby and instead of calling the police doing cpr or anything to help save this young boy jackass as he's now going to be referred as text his baby's mother i cannot pronounce her name i'm not even going to try to pronounce her name first and well last name bc i guess uh, and he texts his general's mother and uh, his sister not general sister but jackass texts his sister and general's mother about what he did he sent general's mother photos of the boy this jackass instead of saving his son took pictures well Instead of saving his son, he consoled him while he plotted his next move to try to see how he was going to get out of it. Then decide in his last act of freedom to torture his baby's mother, well, to torture General's mother by sending her a text message. Ladies, 
Y'all have to be more careful. Y'all have to be more honest with yourselves. And y'all have to understand what y'all are getting yourselves into. Because this right here could have been avoided. General could still be here. General probably... General will still be here. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe. I'm Akish Akhlod Mullins, and this is The Yacht Report.